Hi everyone, Jacqueline here, and welcome to part five of how to make a 2D RPG in Unity. In this video, we're going to be setting up our character animations so that he'll look like he's walking around as we move around the world. To begin, we'll need to head to our sprites folder and take a look at our walk cycle frames. It looks like we have four directions that our character can walk in, so we'll have to create four animations. To create an animation, highlight the frames that you want to use and then drag them all into your scene. This is going to bring up a dialog box that's going to ask you where you'd like to save the animation. Select the animations folder and name the animation an appropriate name. Let's do the same thing for our three other directions. Now that we have our animations created, we can set them up. Go to your animations folder. You'll notice that with each animation, an animation controller was created for each of them. Delete the animation controllers as we won't be using them. We want to create our own animation controller that controls how the player will go from walking up to walking left. Let's right click and create a new animation controller and let's name it player. Double click on it to open up the animator window. This window is the animator window. It is used to set up finite state machines for animations so that we can transition between animations when certain conditions are met. The first scenario that we'll be looking at is transitioning from a stationary position to running. Let's take a look at an example. At this point, we know that we want our character to start from a stationary position and then begin walking when we give the player input. The movement script that we coded in the last video handles the actual movement of the scenario. What we want to do is play an animation when we begin to move. So to transition from stationary to running, the condition of moving must be true. Let's represent this with a variable, specifically a Boolean variable. A Boolean variable can only hold the value of true or false, so we can use it to see if we are moving. If we are, the value will be true. And if the opposite is true, then the value of the Boolean will be false. Let's set it up in the animator. First, we'll need to add an empty state to the animator by right-clicking and selecting Create State and then select Empty. Rename the state to idle by clicking it and changing the name in the inspector. This is going to represent our idle animation, the animation that we will play when we aren't moving. But unfortunately, at the time of reporting, there isn't an idle animation included in the asset pack that I grabbed, so we'll worry about setting that up later. Then, we'll need to create our run state. We are going to create a blend tree that will take care of our running states. Right click and choose create state from new blend tree. Change the name of the state like we did with idle. Now that we've created our states, we're going to create the variable that will let us transition between the idle and run state. Click on the parameters tab here on the left side of the animator. Then click on the plus sign and select bool. Name the bool is moving. Now we're ready to set up our transitions. Right click the idle state and select make transition. Click on the run state to set the transition. This is our transition from idle to run. Click on the transition to set it up. With the transition selected, take a look at the inspector. Uncheck the has exit time box. Then let's add a condition for the transition. Click on the plus sign and a new condition will appear. Set the condition to be is moving and then set the value to be true. When we stop moving, we will also probably want our character to stop running and go back to idle. So we should create a transition from run to idle as well. With the transition selected, uncheck the has exit time box. If you leave this box checked, when the transition gets triggered, it's only going to transition after the animation is done playing. This will make the animation look unresponsive, so we need to make sure that we uncheck this box. By doing so, the animation will go directly into the next one as soon as it's triggered. Let's add a new condition. Set the condition to be is moving, and then change the value to false, since we want to stop running when we're no longer moving. With all of our transitions set up, we can now work on the running animations. Double click on the blend tree to open it up. Here, you'll see an empty blend tree with no states. Click on the blend tree node to see information about it in the inspector. The blend tree works by blending animations together to make smooth transitions between them. Since we are using the blend tree for movement, we can give it our direction and it can blend between the directional sprites based on the direction that we're moving. But to do this, we'll need to set up some parameters. Click on the blend parameter in the parameter list on the left side of the screen. Double click it to rename it. Make it horizontal. We will then use this to tell the blend tree what our horizontal value is for our direction. Now click on the plus and add another float parameter and call it vertical. This parameter will correspond to our vertical input for our direction. 
In the inspector, you'll notice that the blend type is currently set to 1D. A 1D blend tree takes one parameter and it blends on one axis. Since we're moving on two axes, we want to change it to a simple 2D directional. Now we'll need to set up our blend tree to use the parameters that we created for horizontal and vertical. Just under the blend type, there are two fields for the parameter. The left one should be set to horizontal and the right one should be set to vertical. Now we can set up our blend tree to use our animations. In the motion list, add four motions by clicking the plus sign four times. Then drag walk right into the first slot. I'm going to work counterclockwise in the direction by adding move right next, followed by walk up, followed by walk left, and finally walk down. You should have seen some blue dots appear on this graph above our motion list with a red dot located in the center. This is a visual representation of how the blend tree will blend our values of our horizontal and vertical axis to transition between the motions. But it isn't quite set up. First, we'll need to set the X and Y positions of each motion. Set walk right to positive one on the X and zero on the Y. Set walk up to zero on the X and positive one on the Y. Set walk left to negative one on the X and zero on the Y. And finally, set walk down to zero on the X and negative on the Y. The blue dots should have moved to create a diamond around the red dot. With our blend tree set up, we can close our animator tab and click on our player in the hierarchy. We need to add our player animation controller to our player. We need to put it on the visuals game object though, since that is the sprite that we want to animate. Click on the visuals game object that is a child to the player. In the inspector, add an animator component to the game object. Drag in the player animator controller into the controller field. All that's left to do is to tell the animator controller that we need to transition from idle to run, as well as pass in our direction values to the blend tree when we are moving. Open the movement script. In order for us to talk to our animator, we will need a reference to it. So under our speed variable, let's create a public animator variable called animator with a lowercase a. We're going to want to animate our character after we have determined the direction that the player wants to move it. Let's call a function called animate movement and pass their direction into it. We haven't created this function yet, so Visual Studio is going to complain with red squiggles. Let's go ahead and create the function now underneath our update function. It's going to have a parameter of a vector three. We can call this direction. This function is going to handle talking with the animator. So the first thing that we should do is check to see if the animator reference is set. We can do this by using an if statement to check if the value of the animator is not null. If we have a complete reference, then we can set our parameters in the animator. The first parameter we will have to deal with is the is moving parameter. Since we only care about the direction we want to move in if we are moving. So let's check to see if we're moving. To do this, we can use an if statement to check if the magnitude of our direction vector is greater than zero. The magnitude of a vector will always be positive since it's the length. A vector with an x and y of zero will have a magnitude of zero. Our direction vector will have an x and a y of zero when we aren't receiving any input from the player. So we can use this to check if we're moving or not. If the magnitude of the direction is greater than zero, then we're moving. So we can set the is moving boolean in the animator to be true. If we are moving, then we also care about telling the blend tree about which direction we're moving. So let's set the parameter values in the animator. We will set the horizontal to direction.x and we will set the vertical to direction.y. With that done, we can take a look at the other option. That is, if the magnitude of the direction is equal to zero. Inside of the else statement, we can set the is moving parameter of the animator to be false since we're not moving. With that done, save the script and head back to Unity. Click on the player game object and drag the visuals of the player into the animator field on the movement script, and then hit play to test it out. When you move around, the player should animate in the correct direction. When you're not moving, the sprite should return to the default, which is the first frame of the walk down animation. Great work guys, now you've animated a character running around in our game world. In the next video, we'll be working on creating a level for a character to run around in. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you learned a lot, and I will see you next time.